Hi guys, this is Rashid and you are watching Step by Step Robotics. So finally, I managed to find a time to explain about how to design a cycloid drive. A cycloid drive is a one kind of speed reducer that can provide a high ratio and a compact in size and with the no backlash so you can get a very precise position. The advantage of the cycloid drive is kind of outperformed than the other because it also back drivability. So if you can control the torque of the servo, so you can make you know, robot arms or the robot legs that can be the compliant. And from the manufacturing point of view, this kind of shape can be made from any CNC machine, which doesn't require any kind of special machine like the gear cutter. And as you may know that I have designed this cycloid dive before with these aluminum parts. So this is the one that I have designed. So this part is the um, cycloid gear and this is the servo. So when we took it off, it will be like this. So the cycloid gear box itself is a very compact in size. So this is the 19 to one ratio. And for this time, I'm using the Gym servo, which is this one. It has the built-in controller at the back here. So we can use the RS485 to USB converter and we can control this servo from any PC. So the nominal torque of this servo is around 3.8 kilogram centimeter, but after the gear, it can provide you the 23.6 kilogram centimeters, which is kind of useful for many lightweight application. And the nominal speed of this guide is around uh, 1550 rpm but after the gear we can get 81.6 rpm which i think is still pretty fast for many robotics application so let's see how we're gonna design this cycloid drive okay so before we design anything let me show you what are the main components of the cycloid drive so here, this one is the split assembly of my cycloid drive. So here is the main component, which is the cycloid disc. And I have two of these. And one is a phase shift like um, 180 degrees from the other. So at the back here, this is the roller on the ring or the stator, which has the 20 rollers and the cycloid disc has the 19s probe so the ratio of this cycloid drive is 19 to 1 and the one um, in front here this is the output shaft which, which has the pin that's gonna touch on this bearing of the cycloid disc here and uh, there is the eccentric cam which is gonna connect to the input shaft and it's gonna spin and the cycloid drive gonna move along this um, roller and then this output shaft will move along these circles. So the most difficult part to design is the cycloid disc because if the profile of the disc is not perfectly fit with the roller shape, it's gonna end up with a backlash and the worst is you might not be able to assemble it. So let me show you this documentation that I've researched before. So um, here is the uh, building a cycloid drive with SolidWorks written by Omar Yunis. So if you are using SolidWorks, I highly recommend you to read through of this document. It's very useful and very well documented. So what we need to generate this cycloid profile is uh, two of these parametric equation x and y. So if you are using SolidWorks, it will be very easy because there is the equation driven curve tools that you can use right away. So um, here I will show you the blank page and the tool is here. So equation driven curve. First you select the plane, so then you choose the parametric. Then you need to input these two equations and the uh, T1 to T2. So I made some simple Python script that can 
generate that equation. So this is the design parameters that I'm going to use for an example for the ratio of 19 to 1 with the 50 to 10 and 50 to 15 giant servo. So the R is the radius of the roller of the PCD and it was 28 millimeters and E is the eccentricity or the offset from the input shaft to the cycloid disc and I'm using one millimeters. So E, it, it is a constraint that it must less than R over N and N is the number of the rollers that you're gonna use. So in this case, I would, I'm gonna design the ratio of 19 to one. So I'm gonna use N equal to 20. And the R sub R is four, which is the radius of the roller. So I do some pre-calculation here to let the SOLIDWORKS um, get the equation easily because if you input the whole, the full equation like this to the SOLIDWORKS, it's gonna be error and it will not generate the profile for you. So we do some pre-calculation before. Um, then you will see that here the equation is pretty much more compact and after we run this model you see that it print out these two of the string which is the x and y equation so we can copy this equation here and paste it to here and same for the y copy and paste it here. So the T, it should start from zero to 260 degrees, but if you're gonna draw it in the SOLIDWORKS, I recommend to use from zero to pi, which is 180 degrees, and then you're gonna mirror it. Because if you, for example, try to put zero to um, two pi, which is uh, 360 degrees, like this it seems like it cannot uh, it cannot generate the profile for you but if you input it as a pi then it will generate the profile for you so then you just click OK and here we are this is the half of the cycloid profile then next is to create the center line like this. Then we're gonna miller it here and miller about this line. Okay, okay. So you will get the full cycloid disc which can directly extrude and use it as it is. But we're not gonna extrude it right now so what I'm going to show you here is the kind of plan or a diagram that gonna make sure that your cycloid disc will be perfectly designed. So at first uh, we define the parameters as 28 of R, E of 1, and R of 4, and N as 20. So we use the equation driven curve tool to create half of this profile and then we mirror it to get the full profile of this cycloid disc that we want. But to make sure that this cycloid disc will fit on your roller and the output shaft or not, let's try to follow this guideline. So here, the second step is you better to make the um, roller's PCD. So in, in our case, we are using uh, the R as 28, which is the diameter of 20, uh, 56. So we just draw the eccentric line. So we first draw the eccentric line of one from the input shaft, which is this one. So from this point, we're gonna make the roller PCD as 56 here. And then we're gonna make the rollers, the 20s rollers 
by using the circular pattern and our rollers has the radius of 4 which is the 8 diameters and you can see that um, our rollers and the cycloid disc are perfectly touched on every rotor. So if the rollers or the cycloid disc has some collide or interference that means you um, define wrong parameters or you pick the wrong point to create these circles so make sure that everything is selected correctly then next we need to uh, make the second disc which is 180 degree phase shift from the first disc so you can mirror the first disc profile with this line and it's gonna have the same eccentric as one so the second disc we have the profile as this dash line so again this second disc profile have to be touched perfectly on the roller as well so if it interference with the rollers or it's not touched properly so you are picking the wrong lines of millers or you did something wrong then next we gonna make the PCD of the disc radial hole which mean these circles so um, this circle is the PCD of the hole that the output shaft pin gonna pass through so for example here I'm using 31 millimeter PCD and six holes so you can use any um, size as you want and also many holes so the diameters of these circles can be calculated by using this equation which is equal to diameters of the output pin plus e times 2 so in this case we need to define the diameter of the output pin at first so i'm planning to use the three millimeters diameter pin so three plus E is 1 times 2 which is mean it's 2 so 3 plus 2 is 5 so this circle is 5 and then we need to do the same thing for the second disc as well so you can mirror the first uh, PCD radio holes to the second disc by using this uh, line and finally you can draw the output shaft pin on the center of the roller circles and you can circular pattern of that pin on that PCD so you can see that this is the three millimeters output shaft pins and it touched perfectly on these circles and these circles so from the step-by-step -step diagrams you can see that the cycloid disc is perfectly fit if we're using these parameters so next we can draw this cycloid disc on a new sketch and extrude it and design the other parts so i think the other part is not that difficult anymore because we have already planned which parameters and which size we're going to use so if we have a good plan of the parameters and the parts that we want to use so we can design it easily and you can design any ratio as you want so you don't need to rely on my drawings or my files so you can design any size of the cycloid drive to match with your application
and that is how I design my cycloid drive. So there are many research papers explain about how you're gonna optimize your cycloid drive and make it much more uh, high efficiency. So for example, like the holes of the cycloid disc and the what kind of the rollers you wanna use and the ratios, all that factors is quite pretty much related on the efficiency. So I will leave it in my uh, website and also in the link below. So if you would like to see, please check it out. Um, this is what I would like to do for the cycloid drive. Here is the um, uh, robot arms that uh, the cycloid drive directly attached to each joint. So this is a four degree of freedom and this is my grippers from my last video. Actually, I haven't finished this guy yet. There is a lot of things that we need to do with the cycloid drive. So this is pretty much um, the prototype and want to see the possibility that we can use this cycloid drive in the real application. So there is still some rooms that we need to develop for the cycloid drive. For example, the um, brake for the output shaft. So when there is no power, the robot arm not gonna fall down like this. And also if we can attach the output encoders, that would be really great because right now all of the feedback we can get is from the servos. But sometimes when the servos start like this, it's hard to know its home position. And if you want to see some demonstration about the cycloid drive for the robot arms, you can check on my old videos about um, controlling the cycloid drive for the tooling manipulator and that is for today videos i hope you guys like it so if you have any suggestion or the knowledge you want to share please leave it in the comment below and if you like my robot journey video please press like button and don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and see you soon